Someone made an interesting comment on the last video I made regarding the, the preacher in Africa that died after he finished preaching. And I knew that someone was going to make a comment such as the one that this young lady had made. And the comment reads as follows. But how do you know if that was the honor by God? He could have been living underhanded and taken out by the rapture of God because he was deceiving slash misleading others. Now, that's the mindset of a lot of black people today regarding the preachers in the church. And it's interesting that they don't think that toward white preachers. It's only towards brown preachers or what they perceive as black preachers. Black preachers are the only ones that is always deceiving and misleading others. No other race, no other nationality, no other culture, just black people. Although this preacher is an African preacher. But the question was, but how do you know if that was the honor by God? This is how she wrote it. He could have been living underhanded and deceiving and misleading others. Now, my response to her was by discernment. See, as a child of Yah, you have to have the spirit of discernment. Discernment is one of the spiritual gifts that the Most High gives to his preachers or better yet, to his people. Those that are called and anointed, that's unctioned by God, God equips them with the spirit of discernment to know right and wrong to be able to read in the spirit. So my answer was by discernment. I would have known if it wasn't of God. But we can say the same thing for John the Baptist that was beheaded along with other disciples that died for the sake of Christ. That was my response to her. Now, I want to read a couple of scriptures. And I don't want to be on this too long, but there's just so much information that I would like to share. The first scripture I want to bring light to is when John the Baptist was beheaded. He was not beheaded because of the preaching of the gospel. John the Baptist was beheaded for telling the truth. He said something that somebody did not like. And they held a grudge against him. But I'm going to let the scripture speak for itself. I want to take you to Matthews, the 14th chapter, reading the first to the 12th verse. And this is shining light upon John the Baptist and why he was beheaded. Now, in this day and time, people would say, oh, he was beheaded because he did something wrong. He sinned. He was misleading people. He wasn't telling the truth. So this is God's punishment for John the Baptist. And we can say the same for all of the prophets that died horrible death. Some was boiled in oil, from what I understand. But the 14th verse says, At that time Herod, the Tetrarch, heard of the fame of Jesus, and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist, 
He is risen from the dead. Now he's thinking that Jesus or Yeshua is John the Baptist raised from the dead. He said, this is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. And therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. In other words, John was telling him, You can't have her, it's not right. You're messing with your brother Philip's wife. It's not right, man. The fifth verse says, And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. Now keep in mind, Herod did not fear God. He feared the people. I'm going to repeat that. He did not fear God. He feared the people. Because the multitude, they counted him as a prophet. The sixth verse says, But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John the Baptist's head in a charger. So the mother, Herodias, wanted the head of John the Baptist because she didn't like what John the Baptist said regarding Herod seeing her. Do you follow me? So it had nothing to do with preaching the gospel. It had much to do with John telling the truth. John spoke things that they didn't want to hear. They wanted things their way. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. But John the Baptist said, hey, that's not right. You're not supposed to have your brother's wife. So from that point on, Herodias had a grudge against John the Baptist. And she used her daughter to destroy John the Baptist. She prostituted her own daughter. She allowed her young daughter to dance the same man that she slept with. She allowed her little daughter to dance before him because it pleased him to watch this little girl dance. The eighth verse says, And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John the Baptist's head in a charger. The ninth verse says, and the king was sorry. Nevertheless, for the oath's sake, in other words, he was keeping his word. And then which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given her. So he was protecting his reputation, his word. He made a promise, and now he had to keep his word, and he made the promise in front of those that sat down to eat with him. The 10th verse says, And he sent and beheaded John in prison. Not only John the Baptist was bound in prison, but he was destroyed. His life was put to death in prison because of a woman. And he sent and beheaded John in prison. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel. And she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came 
and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. That's how John the Baptist died. So can we say the same thing for John the Baptist? He died for doing something wrong, although he died for telling the truth. He died a horrific death. He was beheaded. And not only did his body rest, but his head not only was separated from his body, but it was taken and given to this woman, or better yet, given to the daughter that danced for him, and she gave it to her mother because she had a grudge against him. I want to share another example. And this is in regards to Stephen. Now, this is very heavy to me. This is very deep, very um, emotional. And you would have to read from the sixth chapter of Acts, starting maybe at the eighth verse, reading into the entire seventh chapter of the book of Acts to get the full grasp of what Stephen said that caused him to be stoned to death while calling upon God. Because you know you have the naysayers to say, where was God? When babies are destroyed, when babies have to suffer, or where was God when this happened, or where was God when that happened? Why didn't God come down and save them? So, I'm going to read from the 8th to the 15th verse of the 6th chapter of Acts, and then I'm going to read a portion of the 7th chapter. I'm reading the 6th chapter because I want to give you an idea of what started all of this. Stephen wasn't preaching. He was doing what a lot of people do in the so-called black community. He was debating. And he was asked a question. And he answered the question. And because they didn't like what he had to say, they became emotional and violent and stoned him to death. So reading Acts, the sixth chapter, reading the 8th to the 15th verse, it reads as follows. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, in this modern time, preachers, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and the Serenians and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. <coughs> Excuse me. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. So they were impressed with this young man. The 11th verse says, the nay suborn men which said, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Excuse me. <coughs> so while Stephen was speaking, you had the naysayers that came about to stir up the crowd. They said, we heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. So you have to be careful when people start asking you questions. In many cases, they're not asking because they want to know. They're asking because they want to find fault and reason to destroy you. So be careful of those people that ask you questions and say you're because you are a Christian or because you are a preacher, 
you're supposed to answer this question. Be careful, those people. The 12th verse says, And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, This man ceased not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. And we have heard him say, that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been as it had been the face of an angel. So they saw Stephen's innocence. Now, I'm going to skip down to Acts, the seventh chapter, reading the 48th to the 60th verse. Because it's so long, and, I, and I, I encourage you to go back and read the sixth chapter of Acts and then the seventh chapter of Acts. The 48th verse says, How be it the Most High, this is Stephen speaking, he says, how be it the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. And your fathers did, so do ye. This is Stephen speaking. The 52nd verse says, Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? In other words, Stephen is giving them a history lesson. He's showing them the works of their fathers. And now they are doing the same thing that their fathers of old have done and about to do. So the same thing that Stephen was preaching about how their fathers, their foreparents killed the prophets, they're going to do the same thing even as Stephen speaks the truth. People do not want to hear the truth. They want to hear what they want to hear. They want to hear things that's going to heed to their itching ears. So the 52nd verse says, Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them and showed before of the comings of the just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. The 53rd verse says, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. In other words, you received the laws by the disposition of angels and you have not kept the law. The 54th verse says, when, ye heard the, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. So they bit down on this man. They were torturing this man because they didn't like the truth that he was speaking. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into the heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice 
and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. In other words, they bum rushed him. They could not take what they were hearing coming from this young man that was full of the Holy Ghost that had the face of an angel. So they didn't care about how innocent you look. They didn't like what you had to say because it came against their views and their principles and their ideologies. But the 57th verse says again, then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul, which later was changed to Paul. The 59th verse says, And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Now, some of the naysayers today would say, where was God when this was happening? Stephen was calling upon Jesus and God. And we've seen that happen in this modern time where someone was dying, being beat. And crying out saying, Lord Jesus, help me, help me. So you have the unbelievers and naysayers that will say, well, this person died calling upon Jesus and Jesus did not help this person. Where's Jesus, they say. So the same thing could go for Stephen. The 59th verse says that, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And the 60th verse says, and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. So even while he was dying and they stoning him, he said the same thing or similar to what Yeshua said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And we have said this, he fell asleep. In other words, Stephen died. That was dramatic. Why did that happen to him? Because he spoke the truth. Even in this day and time that we're living in, people cannot stand the truth. If you speak out against falsehood, people want to harm you. They threaten you. They want to end your life for speaking the truth. We have two examples, John the Baptist and Stephen, that was murdered for speaking the truth because the children of Satan cannot handle the truth. They'd rather harm you and end your life than to submit to what is right, what is holy, and what is pleasing to God. So when, when the question is asked to me, how do we know that this preacher, one thing I've never got in the habit of doing is guessing why things happen. I never guess why things happen. When things happen, I don't try to figure it out. I don't try to guess and wonder why that happened. Did that happen because they did something wrong? I don't do that. I allow my spirit to discern what's going on. If information come out in the media that a person was committing a crime in the act of something violent that took place, 
then I could say they reap what they sow. Some people may say, well, the punishment didn't fit the crime. They didn't have to do that to him. But then again, he didn't have to be there to cause that, those things to happen to him or her. So we reap what we sow. So when it comes to discerning a matter such as that, I always look at it, what was the state of mind of that individual when that individual gave up the ghost? When they lost their mind, what was the state of their mind when that happened to them? That preacher died after he finished preaching. That, to me, is a great honor because when he sat down and gave up the ghost, he died peacefully. He was not in pain. He was not suffering. It wasn't because of a gunshot wound. He wasn't being robbed. I've heard of cases, man, where preachers have died because they were out committing adultery. And right in the act of sex, or committing adultery, they had a heart attack and lost their lives. God will judge them. There are preachers that were doing things and somebody walked up in the church and shot him. A violent death. Was that because of something he did? Or was it because he stood up and told the truth and someone didn't like it. Like the example I gave before of the preacher that was preaching against shacking up. And the young lady went home and told the guy she was living with that we can't do this no more. It's wrong. He went to the church to harm the pastor because he felt the pastor got inside her mind. So when we see situations where a pastor is shot to death, somebody walks inside a church and takes, that, takes the life of that pastor, we can't always say he did something wrong and that was God's punishment upon him. Because if that's the case, we can say the same thing for John the Baptist. We can say the same thing for Stephen. We can say the same thing for all the prophets of old that died violently we can say that for Malcolm X we can say that for uh, for uh, Elijah Muhammad or whoever you hold in high esteem and they died a heart attack or you take Dr. C for example Many people say he was doing a good thing, but look what happened to him. Was he being punished for something he did wrong in his life? So we can't even, we can't always judge that. If they are not dying in the middle of a crime, because it would be unjust for the Most High to destroy this preacher while preaching because of something he did wrong and you have preachers out there that's doing a whole lot worse than that. Those same preachers that, that have videos where they convince these women to have sex with them or to perform sexual acts on them. Those preachers are, are, are allowed to live. Why would this preacher die because of judgment. So it makes no sense to me. See we are quick to always point fingers. And pull negativity out of a situation. So with discernment of spirit. You can discern if something is wrong with something. If, if, if that preacher did something wrong in his life. I really don't think he would have died that peaceful. 
And even if he did, judgment belongs to God. The ultimate decision for what happens to his soul belongs to God. He wouldn't have died that peaceful. And if he did, he's now in the hands of his maker. And he has to give an account for what he did in his life. I don't know of not one individual that lived in the flesh on this earth and did not do wrong. Some of the same people that are quick to point fingers are doing wrong even to this very day, even this very moment while they're speaking, they're doing wrong. They're probably living a sodomite lifestyle. That's an abomination. And we know what the Bible says about that. But yet you want to point fingers at a preacher and say the reason why he died in the pulpit was because he's deceiving and misleading people. It's a lie from hell. So don't, don't be always so quick to judge somebody. You know, so you don't know how you're going to leave this earth. Some of the best, some of the, some very good people or we, people we perceived as good died in car accidents. You know that question, why good things always happen to good people? And it seemed like the evil people are left behind to cause hell and havoc on the earth. So, feedback, tell me what you think. Until next time. I'm fearless.